Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi and welcome to the weekend edition of ASEAN News. Still with me, Vanessa. Cambodian capital starts at Mr. Third Dose Booster Shot for the public. Residents in Phnom Penh queues to get their third dose booster shot to stop the spread of COVID-19 in the country and reopen the economy. Switching between the AstraZeneca and Chinese Sinovac and Sinopharm vaccines, frontline workers and their family members are among the first to receive their third dose at the National Pediatric Hospital in Cambodia's capital. Official data shows Cambodia has administered at least one coronavirus vaccine dose to half of its population of 16 million, among the highest rates in Asia with vaccine diplomacy playing a key part in its success. Cambodia, an ally of China and one of Asia's poorest countries, started inoculations with Chinese-made vaccines in February, while millions of doses provided by the United States, Japan and Britain have arrived in recent weeks. The Ministry of Health says there are 455 new coronavirus cases and 20 deaths, bringing the total infections to 83,839 and the death toll to 1,634. Laos Prime Minister says politicizing COVID-19 origin tracing is inhumane. Laos Prime Minister Pankam Vipaban says the acts of politicizing the COVID-19 origin tracing issue is inhumane and the relevant research should be science-based. In a recent interview with Chinese media outlets, the Laos Prime Minister condemned the acts of politicizing the COVID-19 origin tracing, calling for global cooperation in the fight against the pandemic. I think it is inhumane to politicize the origin tracing issue. Scientists from all countries must work together to find out the cause of the disease. Only then can we know why the virus appeared. It is a scientific issue, not about foreign policies or political policies. We can only defeat the pandemic after we know about the facts. If we just try to shift blames without knowing the facts, we will not figure out the cause. And neither can we cure the disease. Both tracing the origin of the virus and finding the cause of its emergence should be based on science, not involve political factors. It is better for all countries to work together in a sincere and open manner. The last foreign minister in a statement says that since the new variants of the virus are more infectious, all countries should spare no efforts to promote cooperation in research, development and production of vaccines and drugs and avoid politicizing the origin tracing activities. Tracing the origin of the virus is a complex scientific issue and countries must uphold the spirit of objectivity, transparency, inclusiveness and pure scientific research. Thailand anti-government protesters clashes with riot police in Bangkok on the Prime Minister's handling of coronavirus pandemic. Thousands of Thai anti-government protesters clashes with riot police in Bangkok's capital amid rising anger over the handling of the coronavirus pandemic by Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha's administrations. Riot police out in their hundreds are seen using tear gas, water cannon and rubber bullets to disperse the protesters. The police says at least six people officers are injured during the clashes, with one officer shot in the leg and three others hit by shrapnels from a homemade bomb. The number of injured protesters is not known. At least six protesters are arrested after earlier warning that all public gatherings are illegal under COVID-19 emergency rules. Two police boots are also set on fire as the sporadic violence continued into the night. 
Talent's youth-led protest movement appears to be regaining momentum after demonstrations last year attracted hundreds of thousands of people before a crackdown by authorities. The protesters have also broken traditional taboos by demanding reform of the monarchy, risking a persecution under Lee's Majesty law that makes insulting or defaming the king, queen, heir and regent punishable by up to 15 years in prison. Police fired tear gas at Thailand protesters after they marched to Prime Minister's residence to protest. Thailand police fired tear gas canisters and rubber bullets at demonstrators after hundreds defied a ban on gatherings to rally in central Bangkok. The protesters are attempt to march from Bangkok's Victory Monument to the Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha's residence to demand his resignation over his government handling of the coronavirus crisis. Police shot tear gas from an elevated highway in response to demonstrators who tried to pull down containers that were being used as roadblocks in the third day of confrontation this week. Activists from the youth-led Talufo group had vowed to protest peacefully after demonstrations this week also ended with police using tear gas and rubber bullets to disperse them as they pressed for Premier Prayut removal. Thailand's youth-led protest movement, which drew broad support during months of large and frequent rallies last year, is regaining momentum coinciding with country's worst coronavirus outbreak yet. South Korea turns COVID-19 testing booth contactless to protest the whole body from other people. A South Korean hospital upgraded a COVID-19 testing booth to become a mobile contactless that can test people and enable telemedicine for basic treatment. Halim University Sacred Heart Hospital says it has developed the one-stop clinic to protect staff and free them from the burden of wearing full-body protective gear in the sweltering heat. Patients enter the rooms that seal automatically to reduce the spread of the pathogens. Nurses reach patients through windows fitted with rubble globes, while doctors can speak remotely through video systems. Previously, patients with fever or respiratory symptoms had to wait long hours to gain access to a doctor and had to be isolated. It is very difficult for people with fever or respiratory symptoms to get professional medical treatment due to the coronavirus situation. But we solved this problem by installing a glove wall where patients can see and hear well. A minimum number of nurses like Jong and Sol, 23, are needed on site for basic COVID-19 testing or temperature checks, and they no longer need to put on level D protection gear, gloves, safety glasses, face shield, and chemical-resistant boots. Halim University Sacred Heart Hospital Director Yu Kim Ho says they expect that if they develop this technology a little more, it will be a very useful medical care system in countries where doctors are scarce or in areas where there are not enough medical resources. Flood water continues to inundate the streets after heavy rains in southern Japan. Flood water brought by heavy rains continue to inundate its streets and homes in southern Japan. A torrential rain lashes much of submerging roads and buildings in the western part of the country while three people are feared dead after a landslide in the central Nagano prefecture. The rain stop in much of Kyushu, even as Tokyo and other parts of the country are pounded by the downpour. In Takeo, a city in Saga Prefecture in Kyushu, entire roads are submerged as rescue workers in wetsuits dragged inflatable boats and surveyed the damage. Local residents carried broomsticks and buckets and waded knee-deep in water.
とりあえずお洋服は全部ダメになりました<笑>あと Well right now my wardrobe is completely ruined along with our furniture Two year ago we had about the same occurrence but all the new furniture we had replaced was completely ruined 全部ダメになっちゃいましたでしたね、もう熊本地震も一応。I was really shocked. I also experienced the 2016 Kumamoto earthquake, but this has left an impression in a different way. 心に残ったかなって思いますね。A level 4 evacuation warning, the second highest alert, was still in place for Takeo and nearby towns for about 18,300 households as of 12 noon local time. Manila residents rushed to get vaccinated after false rumors spread. Several cities in Greater Manila are ramp up their vaccination campaign with more slots and hubs as residents rush to vaccination centers after false rumors spread that they will not be able to leave their homes if they were not vaccinated. Our mayor decided to extend the vaccination until midnight or early morning so that people will not longer congregate in the morning. The number of slots available for residents to get their vaccinations have been increased, while several vaccination centers have been operating 24 hours depending on vaccine supply. Schools and stadiums have also converted into makeshift vaccination hubs. I do not really want to be inoculated because I have a lot of illnesses. But lately, I see a lot of people older than me getting their vaccinations. And my child and my wife told me to take my jab since we will not never know when I might get infected by the virus. Movement in Manila has been restricted from August 6 to 20, with only 6% of the Philippines' 110 million people fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Millions remain vulnerable to infection. The government is aiming to fully immunize up to 70 million people before the year ends. China and WHO joint report on tracing origin of coronavirus fully compliant with WHO procedures. Chinese Foreign Minister spokeswoman Huang Chongyin says the China and World Health Organization joint research report on coronavirus origin tracing fully complied with the procedures of the World Health Organization. According to a report of the Washington Post, Peter Ben Embarek, co-head of the World Health Organization and China Joint Study Team, stated during an interview with the Danish media there is a still possibility for Chinese laboratory staff to bring the virus out of the laboratory in process of bad virus research. The report says Embarek believe, although the joint report stated that the laboratory incident hypothesis is extremely unlikely, there is still possibility. Embarek also says the relevant media didn't broadcast the program until now and distorted his views by publishing his words out of context online. Hua says on August 13, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs held a briefing on COVID-19 origins tracing for diplomatic envoys in China. On August 13, the Minister of Foreign Affairs held briefing on COVID-19 origins tracing for diplomatic envoys in China. Once again responded to the lab leak theory by stressing that the allegation that SARS-CoV-2 is created by or leak from Wuhan Institute of Virology is a sheer fabrication out of nothing. The WHO-China Joint Study Report on the Regions of COVID-19 was produced in full compliance with WHO procedures and with scientific methods. It has proven to be a valuable and authoritative report that can stand the scrutiny of science and history. The report should be the foundation and guidance for global region tracing. Any attempt to overturn or distort the conclusion of the report is political manipulation and disrespect to science and scientists around the world. <laughs> <laughs>
联合研究报告结论的做法都是政治操弄，也是对全球科学家和科学的不尊重。Chinese embassy in Afghanistan continues normal operations to ensure the safety of remaining Chinese personnel in Afghanistan. Chinese Foreign Minister spokeswoman Hu Qinyin says the Chinese embassy in Afghanistan is still operating normally, with the staff members all remaining on their post to perform their official duties. The Chinese embassy in Afghanistan is still operating normally. The Chinese ambassador and embassy staff remain on their post to perform their duties. At a press conference in Beijing, Hua says the embassy has been helping Chinese citizens in Afghanistan return to China and is still working to ensure the safety of the remaining Chinese personnel in Afghanistan. Most Chinese citizens in Afghanistan have already returned to China, organized by embassy. There are still some Chinese personnel who have decided to stay in Afghanistan voluntarily. They are now all safe and the embassy is keeping close contact with them. The Chinese embassy in Afghanistan will continue to pay close attention to the situation in Afghanistan and provide necessary services for all Chinese citizens in Afghanistan. The Taliban have seized power in Afghanistan after a two-decade war. The Taliban says the war in Afghanistan has ended and that they will soon declare the establishment of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. The Taliban have also pledged to take responsible actions to ensure the safety of Afghan citizens and foreign missions in Afghanistan. Muhyiddin resigns as Prime Minister due to lost confidence of majority of members of Parliament. In a televised address, Muhyiddin Yassin says he resigns because he had lost the confidence of the majority of lawmakers in parliament. He hoped a new government would be formed as soon as possible. Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin resigns, ending a tory 17 months in office as he battled political infighting and questions over his legitimacy while his government faced a ranging pandemic and economic downturn. Muhyiddin, who had been in office since March 2020, has been asked to stay on as an interim leader after Malaysia's King Al Sultan Abdullah said it was not suitable to hold elections during a pandemic. Pressure on Muhyiddin mounts recently after some lawmakers of the United Malays National Organization Party, the largest bloc in the ruling alliance, withdrew support. He had refused to drop graft charges against some AMNO politicians, including former Premier Najib Razak and Party President Ahmad Zahid Tamidi. They have denied wrongdoing and were among those who withdrew support for him this month. Well, that's a wrap up, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice weekend.